Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dishonored. We are about to make our way into the estate where the Overseer's office is located. So that we can save Kurnow. Oh, this lines up perfectly, this timing. Shut that behind us, no one sees. Good. Uh, we're gonna save Kurnow, and we are going to find some way of disposing of uh, High Overseer Campbell. One of the primary figures involved in Corvo's frame job and the coup and the obvious murder of uh, the Empress and kidnapping of Emily. This is a really important event right off the bat, so they don't waste much time getting us here. And it's also host to what I love most about the game, our first real glimpse of it. Uh, we got a really telling bit of dialogue there. That is a uh, sewer pipe, which is one of the approaches into the estate. Uh, that screen was basically saying that our approaches are entirely up to us, and this is not a bullshit sentiment whatsoever. Uh, it's one of the core things that makes Dishonored so brilliant. Entering this estate alone, there are like four very distinct routes of ingress, uh, like the sewers back there. That leads to, I think, the kennels is where that spills out. Which, by the way, there are hounds in the kennels that will reappear in later missions unless dealt with here. But you do have the option to do that to make them a non-issue down the line. Uh, you can go straight across this courtyard to the ground floor through the front. Or you can even go across the courtyard and enter there, and I think that also will lead eventually to the kennels. That is not what we have our eyes set on, though. We're taking the high road. Just blinking and jumping up here to the second floor windows. Most of which are open. In fact, that's the meeting room. There's also this really circuitous route that you can take that goes through uh, the backyard where we're eventually going to exit to find Samuel. Uh, but you can go there early and take a back route into the back half of the mansion. So we're going to bypass the entire first floor of this manor altogether. We're leaning in and making sure that there are no guards patrolling this hallway, because there are like three of them here, uh, who were potentially going to be looking out the window. I think they're all caught up in conversation, though. Search the place top to bottom. So in order to get into that room that we just tried to open up, uh, we first need a key. I think any of the guards in this hallway could be carrying it. But we need something else anyway. We heard the overseers talking about the Heretics brand. Uh, we heard that last time. So we're going to go investigate that to start us off. In every mission, there's always going to be a non-lethal way to accomplish it. And this is going to be ours. The Heretic brand is a reserve for those overseers who have committed heinous acts against the Order, but have not broken codes that would otherwise result in execution. No contact, aid, or shelter can be given to one bearing the brand. That person is forever more unwelcome to the Abbey and its affiliates. When used, the brand is applied to the forehead so all can see the sins of the recipient. The chemical compound acts immediately, scarring the heretic for the remainder of life. The interrogation room here at the office of the High Overseer stands ready for branding ritual. Should the need arise, the recipient must be strapped into the interrogation chair, restrained, and the brand applied. The heretic brand itself is to be stored in the same room. That's clear that is what but we are trying to access. That's that locked door. The uh, is th that's the room where the heretic brand is stored. He had help, yes, but how far does it go? The trail goes to Martin, but Martin knows everyone, everywhere. And this overseer here is just talking to himself while reading over the notes on how Corvo escaped. They're currently trying to figure out who was helping us. So we, out, we now have the knowledge of the branding ritual. We don't have the brand itself, though. And like I was saying, there are non-lethal alternatives to every mission. You can find all sorts of ways to kill 
your target. But there's usually one or two really specific ways you can do it with clean hands. And some of them are really, really brutal. Like, they are way worse than death. Especially a quick one. You, as soon as he turns around, we're going to blink onto the floor and knock him out. And hopefully no one's going to be patrolling into the opposite end of the room before we can get somewhere out of sight. Pretty sure we will get the key from him. There it is. So we can go back and open that door up now. Uh, we intentionally didn't go into the meeting room yet because once we do that, it will trigger Kernow and Campbell to go in there and start their meeting. Where Kernow, uh, where Campbell will make an attempt on Kernow's life. And we also learned last time that he intends to poison him. Uh, we don't want to trigger that yet. I'm going to go around and I'm going to clean up all the patrols. I'm getting kind of antsy and impatient with where did this one... Oh. Uh, I don't know how I want to handle this guy. Because I can't figure out what he's trying to do. I think he just went back and forth in that room. Is he still not here yet? Yep. Usually if there's an elevation difference and you're crouching, aka in stealth mode, uh, they'll give you a lot of leniency with guards seeing you, even if you are technically in their line of sight. And that sucks. He turned around the split second before I hit the uh, right bumper to knock him out. So he did end up seeing me. I think that will not only affect my clean hands and eliminate that bonus, because I panicked and killed him. Uh, if I had whipped out the sleep darts, I think I would have had to shoot him twice, and he may have called for help in that time. Uh, so I just slashed him real quick. But I think that also will count as me triggering an alert. So I won't get the ghost either. We just want to get rid of every guard patrolling here. I think we are down to maybe one more. Yeah, you. After their conversation, they kind of go their own ways into their own routes. We're going to make sure that they're not standing right in the, or um, dropped right in the middle of the hallway as well. So now everything's mostly fine and dandy. Uh, there are still a few things I want to take care of as well as getting in here early. And this will be perfect. What we have is a man. A Thirty, perhaps, slender. Unusual tattooing on the face and chest. Probably superstitious heresy. Wearing some sort of industrial mask when we brought him in. Stolen out of one of the whaling factories from the look of it. You're one of Dowd's men, aren't you? Caught at last. Give us a name at least. What's wrong with his eyes? Opium? Laudanum? Are you with us? What's he doing? Some kind of fit? He's gone. Here it is, a pin, hidden in one of his gloves. Subject has administered some kind of poison. The effects seem to have been lethal. I think that's the second or third time now we've heard tell of a character named Dowd. He's uh, rather important to the plot. And we know he is a masked assassin, much like Corvo is. that his men are fiercely loyal, willing to uh, poison themselves to death rather than give up information to the enemy, to anyone interrogating them. Uh, now, there are a couple of guards who will occasionally patrol up the stairs, and they can be problematic. There are two here. I think there is one or two on the opposite stairwell. 
Uh, the other ones that you see in the middle of the ground floor there, in the foyer, they'll mostly stay put. But what we want are these ones. So we're going to get behind him. Oh, Blink is so versatile. It's so good. And we're going to make a couple of treks now. Just to drop uh, all of these guards somewhere nice and out of sight. The funny thing is, when you knock them out, you can hear them snoring loudly, but they will not attract attention that way. As long as you dump them somewhere in the shadows, uh, usually no one will come across them. I would like to know where this guard is, because there's usually... There you are. Oh? He got a little bit spooked. Not enough to turn around and see what the noise was so I think what happened there was um, I blinked but I didn't teleport straight onto the ground uh, the blink distance put me just a little bit off the ground and I fell like a foot enough to make a noise behind him Ooh, we have to watch that that can be dangerous and what the fuck are you doing oh he almost turned around right in front of my face. I have no idea what he's doing. I don't think you're supposed to be down here, sir. Uh, that's going to be a location that we will play with in a little bit. Uh, this is one of the main reasons that we actually want to be so meticulous about clearing out uh, not only the upper floor, but also the stairwell patrols. Particularly because of what's down here. Uh, in fact, if we can open this up early, that'll save me a lot of tr- Oh! What the fuck? There was one more than I accounted for! Oh, damn it. Well, that's- <laughs> That's hardly gonna be... Where the shit? That blink put me on top of the door. Cool. Uh, that's hardly gonna be the biggest screw-up in this LP. But then again, I think Dishonored gets really fun when you're trying to escape a screw-up that you made uh, and going by the seat of your pants. Uh, it does not look like we're gonna be able to get in there yet. Damn. Even if you have uh, foresight into what's going to happen, much like with the uh, the safe combinations, even if you know what the safe combination is, uh, if Corvo doesn't, he won't be able to open it. Same case there. There is a hidden panel that I know about, uh, but Corvo doesn't know about it, so he cannot open it. He doesn't know what to look for. Oh, well. It would save us a little bit of time if we could do that, but no problem. Now we can enter the chamber, and you can hear Colonel and uh, Campbell talking. Good, good. And your niece, Callista, isn't it? I'm very concerned about her. She'll be found. My men are searching district by district. The poor girl. This, again, is really, really cool. We can uh, either switch the poison to Campbell's side, which will poison him instead of Karnow. We can poison them both, or we can uh, break, the, break the glasses and spill the poisoned wine. And neither of them will be poisoned. But that's also an alternative assassination condition. Like, you can just assassinate him with his own poisoned wine. No need to get up close and personal at all. And that would also save Karnow's life if you just switch the glasses. Oh, it's so good, man. Men will come get you when we're finished. Keep each other entertained. Time. I don't understand how this got so unpleasant. Oh, I agree, I agree. A whore dies and suddenly this. Will you have wine? It's a Tivian Red. Thank you. 
What on earth? Who's been in here? I owe you an apology, Captain. This is hardly the hospitality I planned for you. Well, time to do this the hard way. What was that, Campbell? Never mind. It's a stroke of luck for you, Captain. I'm forced to break out the real vintage. Leave the men here. Or we'll have to share with all of them. <laughs> Very well, Campbell. As long as we get this little dispute through. Now, Kerno is not completely out of the woods. And neither are we. Uh, because the men will eventually get suspicious that their meeting is taking so long and come in. Uh, what I'm worried about is them coming in and then doing their patrol route through the rest of the manor and waking the other guards. We should go in and tell Colonel there's important business. Get him out of Campbell's clutches. But I don't really have time to worry about that because they are on their way down. So we're just going to have to leave that to chance. Uh, by the way, if you let either of them drink the poison and then use one of the uh, one of your spells, uh, one that is called possession, you will die because you've essentially poisoned yourself. It's a really cool and unique game over. Now we're going to follow them to uh, that stairwell that we were at earlier. It is Campbell's uh, secret chamber. And we're going to tail him really closely, uh, because the second time that Campbell attempts to kill Kernow, it's going to be a lot more messy, and uh, we don't have a method to prevent that in the same way that we did the poisoning. There's no um, precautionary measure that we can take. Uh, it's going to have to be much more proactive, or reactive actually. And I think that, uh, the guards did wake up all those overseers we knocked out. Or at least they found some of the bodies. Ah, you see this painting? Believed to be early Sokolov. Something primal in there. The way the brushwork slashes across the canvas. If you say so, Campbell. I can't say I have an eye for this sort of thing. Give me a good battle scene anytime and I'm happy. Or a man hunting. If there's a pretty lady in it, I don't... He really doesn't seem that suspicious. Uh, you don't want him to get a stab off. And also, you don't want to intervene too early. Oh god, I love that painting. There's a detail in it that I adore. Um, we're on that in a second. You don't want to intervene too early because you'll spook Kernow. And I would rather not alert him, because he'll go get guards. You can also knock Kernow out if you do this another way. Um, like, back in the room when we were observing them from above, back in the meeting room, we you can just knock both of them out. Uh, but then I wanted Campbell to come down here and open up the secret room uh, so we can get the full extent of that scene, so we can get the rune down here, and so we can get that painting. That painting, by the way, possesses a detail that I adore, because you think so little about it that you might never notice it. In the beginning of the game, Campbell was getting his portrait painted by Sokolov. Uh, that's that painting, the one that he was commissioning. Um, but do you remember what we did in the beginning of the game? There was a glass of cider on a table next to him. We stole that glass of cider, so that version of the painting did not have it in it. If we had not stolen it, it would be in the painting. That is just an insane attention to detail. But it's something that makes Dishonor in such a goddamn great game. I mean, not that one individual thing, but how often those details are heeded. Uh, we're gonna have to be careful because some of the some of the patrols have apparently woken up and you can see because this door is once again open uh, there are gonna be guards but we also hmm, not seeing it yet unless they're all in the library or the interrogation room 
But we got the uh, the Heretic's brand nice and early, which is helpful. So we don't have to make that trip back after we place him in the chair. Uh, because if he is spotted... Oops. If he is spotted once he's in the chair, it'll raise an alarm. And that'll make escaping a much more stressful prospect. Let's double check and close that. And we did it without even murdering him. I love this game. Uh, now we have to get back to Samuel. We can take the back route to the backyard, or we can go back through the courtyard here from uh, from the balcony, which we're gonna be doing. They're like these are just bespoke miniature open worlds, and that's specifically how they designed these to be. Mini open worlds for each mission with linear bottlenecks between them. That's that was their whole goal. Like instead of rewarding the player for doing a bunch of things on a micro level one static way, they made it dynamic by giving you a lot of different options and just saying pick whatever one you want. The real important thing is that you accomplish the mission. You know, do the big picture top down goal. Don't care how you do it, just see to it. It's tremendously rewarding. Huh? Uh -huh. oh, kind of going by the skin of our teeth here. Kind of rushed through that and almost got caught. I think we're okay, though. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, the door to the back alley. It's just back here. I don't think you're going to turn around, are you? No. And this will freeze time while you consider whether or not you want to stay or move on to the next instanced area. Please, she's my sister. She's not a witch. I know her. Out of the way. You expect preferential treatment just because you are. Oh, shit. He really did see me there. Fuck. Well, it's not like we weren't already uh, dabbling with not getting the clean hands or the uh, ghost. Oh, there. I thought it was just uh, Elsa who was in danger there. It was both of them. So by screwing up, we probably saved both of their lives, and that's uh, handy. From nowhere, we would both be dead if not for you. We are forever in your debt. I cannot thank you enough. I must get my sister to safety, but first, I may know of a way to thank you. There's a safe in the bunkhouse. The combination is two, zero, three. Take what you want, and good luck. I really don't know which bunkhouse they're talking about. I don't really want to spend all my time looking around for it, so I don't think we're going to be cracking that safe. There are a bunch of different buildings out here. We're not really What's done with this mission yet. Uh, there's still a reasonable amount of stuff between us and Samuel still. Hmm. I don't think it's this room, is it? Ah, uh, no. There's some stuff worth picking up. A health elixir. We're almost maxed out on all of this. But hey, you never know when it'll come in handy. Saves us from having to buy any more. For the time being, anyway. Assuming all keeps going well, we haven't actually been hurt by any guards yet. Got poked a little bit by the fence. Oh, and the rats. And we murdered very few guards, so that should be a low chaos ranking at the end of this. Would have loved to have done this first mission entirely ghost and clean hands. No detection, no murder. But hey, the goal of the playthrough is more low chaos overall, which we're going to accomplish. And then as we unlock tools and powers, 
we'll show this, uh, some fun creative kills. Use the backyard key that we picked up earlier to get out here. Now, there are still a couple of guards that we have to bypass. We can take this left upper route, and that'll make that much simpler if I can get up on the roof. I think you might be able to slash the windows out, the skylight, uh, to get into the workshop. Otherwise, you need the key, which we do not have, and I do not remember where it is. Yeah. I would assume it's on one of the overseers out here, but again, it's a little bit perilous to experiment with which one might have it. Some of these details I really don't remember, and we're not going for 100% completion anyway, so I do not feel guilty about skipping things. Again, very good reason for you to go and play this game yourself. Uh, just to fill in a lot of these blanks and see everything there is because there is so much to be done and to be seen and Now we're about home free. We just have to climb down the chain and Samuel should see us pretty soon Hey Corvo, it's Samuel From the way I hear it Campbell lived a pretty posh life Maybe it's not my place to say but men of the faith shouldn't live like barons. Are you ready to go? Okay, let's go. and Lord Pendleton are in the courtyard. I expect I'll want to congratulate you. Alright, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.